Hi, this is Zach Mir with the Bulletin Board Heroes for Thursday, May the 4th, here at Zach's Traders Cafe. Starting off with the FTSE 100, where we're dithering near the 50-day moving average, which is uh, adding insult to injury by currently falling. That suggests that an end-of-day close back below 74.50, and uh, the 50-day line area could take us back to April support around the 76.30 level. This stage, really, uh, we need at least uh, an end of day close through 78.30, basically above yesterday's high to unwind uh, what looks like a bit of a sinking feeling going on here. The RSI was uh, correct uh, yesterday or the day before in uh, breaking back below the neutral 50 level, and uh, that's why we are fearing a move down towards the 76.30 area. Moving on to the DAX which uh, hopefully looks a little bit better than the FTSE, uh, still staying above that old 15,700 resistance from February, March, which is obviously impressive. And um, above that, still, we're still looking for a breakthrough 16,000 to take us up to the top of that rising September trend channel at uh, 16,500. Below 15,700, looking at the bottom of that channel around 15,400 in the area of the 50-day line. RSI still holding above the neutral 50 level, so that gives the benefit of the doubt at the moment to the bulls. Obviously, the driver in terms of the negativity was the latest uh, interest rate hike from the Fed. Uh, obviously, keen to still keen to sabotage the U.S. economy and uh, the banking sector as well. Uh, here we've had uh, on the Dow chart uh, the bull trap, minor bull trap through the uh, uh, one-year resistance line there, 34,100. Now we've got the risk of a test of the 50-day moving average around 33,000. Uh, below that, down to the 200-day line, 32,700. But uh, obviously hoping that at least the floor of that rising trend channel from September around 32,700 stays in place. Um, otherwise, we're of course waiting for that uh, now near mythical proper end of day close above 34,100. RSI below neutral 50, so that is a negative, and that's why we are currently looking for the 50-day moving average as a support area or potential support area. Moving along to Bitcoin, uh, which has uh, also been slightly disappointing. I suppose the plus point here is that uh, we are so far finding support at uh, the rising 50-day moving average, and that tends to be a continuation signal of its own right. So uh, multiple bounces off there over the recent past, both last month. And this still waiting for an end-of-day close through 30,000, really, to give us a June 2022 resistance line projection target as high as 34,000. But obviously at the moment that feels like it's still a long way away. We've got a line of resistance there which uh, traders may wish to use. That's around the uh, 29,100 level. So if you're an early bird type of bull, they sort of uh, looking for this market to break out of the near-term triangle there. And then head up to 34,000 without waiting for 30,000 to be cleared. RSI's bounce back above neutral 50, although it's been either side of that level, so not that helpful. The main thing here probably is the rising 50-day line. On to the stocks of the day. First one is uh, Argos Resources, where here we've bounced off uh, a uh, spiked, well, it's a recent uh, probe to the downside. Uh, one could say that we're in a falling uh, we're in a broadening triangle there from back in November. And what we're looking for here really is an end-of-day close back above the old January uh, support there at 0.76. So above that, uh, we could have uh, seen or witnessed a bear trap, two-day bear, tra bear trap, and head back towards the 1.1 pence area of the 50-day moving average. So maybe something for people to watch out for after the rug has been pulled. Onto a stock which is here, not just because it's got a great sounding name, but also because we've broken back above the 50-day uh, moving average. Second time lucky, hopefully. The 50-day line there on Contango, 5.1 pence. Above that, we're looking for 6.1 pence, maybe as soon as the end of this month. Good to see also the RSI bounce off neutral 50, which tends to be a reasonable continuation or recovery signal in such situations. But uh, ideally, we stay above recent support around 4.8 pence. One stock which uh, obviously where the other stock where the rug has been pulled is uh, CapEx and uh, here it's interesting that uh, the shares are still within that falling trend channel after uh, peaking there at the turn of the month. Uh, the floor of that channel around the 1.3 pence area so that might be something for the bottom fishers to uh, 
keep in mind as uh, one or two people seem to be tempted. Uh, in fact, the real uh, signal here would be an end of day close back above the old initial April support there around uh, the 1.57 pence area. But uh, obviously that would be giving away uh, some of the potential upside. Uh, we've just basically got that line of support there from back in uh, the end of October towards uh, the 1.3 pence area. And uh, that may be something to consider. Moving along to a stop with uh, decent news today. First class metals. And uh, here we're looking for the shares to close above that resistance line there from December. Then after that, looking for the 200 day moving average still rising at 13 pence. Ultimately, maybe by the end of next month, back up at 16 pence. I think would be fair after the uh, double bounce we've had off the floor. That rising trend channel from September. Onto a stock which uh, I have, uh, well, I was rather hesitant in calling up because obviously it's not had a great run over the recent months. But uh, here, Goldstone coming up with the goods here, uh, breaking the resistance line there from October around uh, the three pence area, then breaking the initial April resistance around three and a half pence and above three and a half pence. We're looking for as high as eight pence as soon as the end of next month. You can see that the shares are now above their 200 day moving average, 4.8 pence for the first time since November 2021 so that is pretty impressive and uh, as I said uh, nice turnaround there bullish divergence going into uh, April helped the cause as well and that's why we were gunning for a potential turnaround another stock where we've been looking for a turnaround for quite a long time and I think half the market is as well is Greatland Gold now we've got a situation where we've um, got a rising 50-day line we've had a good, good consolidation uh, at that also, uh, good RSI support above neutral 50. We've broken above the 200-day moving average uh, properly now for the first time since March last year. Above that, we're really looking for a minimum target there at that March resistance line towards 11 pence, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, by the end of this month. Obviously, of course, you could wait for uh, 9.3 pence to be broken, the post-September resistance, but it looks as though with that uh, break of the 200-day line above uh, 8.5 pence, we are heading towards 11 pence stock which was uh, as difficult or as uh, sort of reticent in terms of rising uh, just a couple of months ago was hummingbird but uh, it's done what hopefully ggp will do over the next few weeks and uh, broken through the 200 day line there that was around the uh, 7.8 pence level and now we've uh, actually cracked the old one year resistance uh, towards 18 pence above 18 pence looking for at least 24 pence Perhaps as soon as the end of this month, that would take the shares back to where they were in the summer of 2021. And obviously, a lot of good work has been done at the company since then on a fundamental basis. Stock, which was uh, one of those uh, falling knife situations, um, was uh, its arm. And uh, here we've got a situation where uh, we have uh, first signs of uh, the shares rising. We've got the uh, bullish divergence there going into today's uh, uh, near 80% move and hoping for ITS to uh, go up to the bottom, the area of the bottom of that gap from March around 1.8 pence as a best case scenario. Otherwise, obviously, we just fail where we've peaked at the moment around 0 0.7. So it might be the case that uh, uh, cynics would just say, well, 0 0.7 was the best we can do. But there is a chance, as there always in the, is, is in these situations, that if we break 0 0.7, we could head uh, much higher. Stop loss on the bull argument at the moment, the broken resistance line there from uh, just a few weeks back uh, around the 0.4 pence area. So but, but above 0.4, looking for 0.7 initially on uh, ITS. Moving along to uh, another rather uh, unusual situation, a strange name here, Merit Group. Here we've broken the line of resistance from August 2021. That was around 37 pence and looking for as high as 65 pence by the end of this month at the top of that broadening triangle from back in November 2021. Pan-African is next and a nice reversal pattern here on the daily chart. So almost like an inverted head and shoulders really from uh, December onwards. Uh, above the uh, right shoulder there at 17 pence and the 200 day moving average, we're looking for a neckline break around 20 pence to lead us up to 25 pence, which is a... Uh, early 2021 resistance line projection on the daily chart. Hopefully hit that by the end of this month. 
On to stock from the Aquis market, which is uh, doing well. In fact, I was going to cover it yesterday, but uh, chickened out. Uh, here we've got uh, uh, Sunox, and um, here broke the uh, 50 day line around six pence uh, last week and looking for 15 pence as soon as the end of this month, while, especially while we hold above the uh, 7.5 pence area, which was the uh, top of that big up day that we had at the end of last month. Sound Energy, uh, the next contender, and here a uh, nice picture as well, not too dissimilar from the uh, uh, the the last uh, setup of Pan African that we were looking at. Inverted he head and shoulders pattern here, a neckline break of uh, two point one pence could take us up to three two point two pence as soon as the end of next month. RSI rebound off the neutral fifty level as well, and support uh, above the fifty day moving average of one and three quarters, so above one and three quarters. Certainly looking for three and a quarter over the next uh, four to six weeks. Moving on to Crimson Tide, and um, here the situation difficult to resist in terms of the latest breakout through three pence. That means uh, we're looking for a decent upside from current levels, top of that channel, sorry, that uh, triangle from back in uh, 2020, uh, four and a half pence IDD by the end of next month. 50 and 200 day lines both rising quite sharply now, so that should help the cause. Finishing off with a stock for the Bears, just to uh, upset them a bit further, hopefully. Uh, here we've got uh, Verditech. Here we have had a successful break of the 200 day moving average at one and a quarter pence. Uh, that was the first time the shares were properly above the 200 day line since uh, the end of uh, 2021, so quite significant in terms of a trend change. And uh, current view is above the 200 day average at one and a quarter, looking for 2.4 pence as soon as the end of next month. There's a gap to fill up to around 1.8, which hopefully will be hit anyway, even if we don't get up as high as 2.4 pence. That's it for me today. More updates tomorrow.